Hi everyone. This is a video on a few examples for naming cycloalkenes and naming cycloalkynes. Quick review of the naming rules. If we see a double bond, the name is going to end with ene. If we see a triple bond, it's going to end with y and e. We're going to use a number prefix to indicate the number of carbons in the ring. Pro, but, pent, hex, hept, like that. These names are always going to have cyclo because we make a ring structure. Traditional rules for naming branches, alphabetical, di, tri, all that stuff. Here are a couple things to watch out for. All branches are going to be assigned a digit to show their location. And the trick is we have to start numbering so that the double or triple bond falls in between carbon number one and two. We still can go clockwise or counterclockwise. We're going to count so that the numbers that we use are as small as possible. Here's a few examples. Let's look at what we have here. We have a four carbon ring, it's a square, and there's a double bond. Plus, there's this one carbon branch on the outside. Let's leave the branch aside for a second and let's think. So it's a four carbon ring with a double bond in it. So it's going to end with en. We're going to use a prefix for four, which is butte. We're going to have cyclo because the structure makes a ring. Not thinking about the branch just yet, this square with the double bond in it is cyclo butte ene. Ene because of the double bond, butte, it's four carbons in the ring, and it makes a loop. Cyclo, cyclobutene. This is a one carbon branch. One, one is meth and it's a branch. This is methyl. Methyl, methyl cyclobutene. Now, all branches get a digit, so we're going to have to assign this methyl a number to show which part of the ring it's attached to. We need to start counting so that the double bond is in between carbon number one and two, and we want the digit that we're going to assign to the methyl to be as small as possible. We have two options. We can call this carbon number one, that top left hand corner, and that would mean we're going this way, one, two, three, going in a counterclockwise direction. If we count like that, the methyl would be on carbon number three. Carbon number one, number two, number three. And the double bond is in between one and two. We also have the option to call this carbon number one and this carbon number two. For the double bond to be in between carbon number one or two, we always have two options, the clockwise option and the counterclockwise option. If we're going, in the clockwise direction, then we have one, two, three, and the methyl would be on carbon number four. Now clearly, three is smaller than four. So we want to decide to count in the counterclockwise direction, going here, and we have three methyl cyclobutene. The next example, it also has a methyl on it, but this time it's a five carbon ring with a triple bond. There's a triple bond, there's five carbons, and it makes a ring. Let's ignore the methyl for a second. Five carbon ring with a triple bond, that's cyclo pent pine. A triple bond somewhere amongst five carbons that make a ring, cyclo pent ine. This is a one carbon branch. We've seen it so many times already. It's methyl. Methyl cyclopentine. We have to assign it a number. We have to assign digits to the carbons in the ring so that the double bond is in between carbon one and two, 
and we're going to count clockwise or counterclockwise so the methyl gets the smallest number possible. Here, if I call this carbon number one, and I'm going in a counterclockwise direction, like we did in the previous example, this would be carbon number one, two, three, four, five. The methyl would be attached to carbon number five. The alternative is to call this carbon number one and this one number two and go in the clockwise direction. If we go in the clockwise direction, then we have carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number three. And three is smaller than five, so we must be deciding to go in the clockwise direction. And this one is three methyl cyclopentine. A triple bond between five carbons that makes a ring. There's a branch with one carbon in it, and it's attached to the third carbon of the ring. 3-methyl-cyclopent-ine. One more example. This one has two different branches on it, but both of them are methyl. It's a six-carbon ring with a double bond. Let's ignore those methyls for a second, and let's name the six-carbon ring with a double bond. It has a double bond. We're going to use a prefix for six, and it makes a ring, so cyclo. Not thinking about the branches just yet, the main ring structure here is cyclohexene. Ene, a double bond between six carbons, hex, and it makes a loop, cyclohexene. Here we have a one carbon branch and another one carbon branch. A one carbon branch, as we've just seen, is methyl. We have two methyls. We're going to say di for multiple of the same kind of branch. Two different methyls. This is dimethyl cyclohexene. Now, the numbering. Each branch is going to be assigned a digit. We have to start counting so that the double bond is in between carbon numbers 1 and 2. Already, it might stand out that this branch here is closer to the right hand, is on the right hand side. So we're going to get smaller numbers if we go in the clockwise direction. So this is going to be carbon number 1, carbon number 2, number 3, and number 4. If we count in the clockwise direction, we get 3 and 4. If we went counterclockwise, we would have 5 and 6. And 3 and 4 is obviously smaller than 5 and 6. So we have 3,4-dimethyl-cyclohexene. The big thing to remember, and a major assumption in these naming rules, is that Carbon number one and two is the location of the double or triple bond. Because we're not sticking the location in here like we would for a regular alkene or a regular alkyne, by leaving out that digit, it's built into the process that the double or the triple bond is in between those first two carbons. Then we have the option to count clockwise or counterclockwise so that the digits that we do assign are as small as possible. And I hope that helps.